Hello again everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Engine Shed. Uh, today it's going to be a very quick one for me, but before we get on to that, thank you very much to all my returning subscribers. Um, it has been a very long time between drinks for me, and I do hope everyone had a safe and happy Christmas. Um, but today I thought I would address something that one of my regular subscribers, Maurice, has asked me in the comments more recently, uh, and that is how to deal with the programming of a Helgen turntable. Now this is a video I've covered before, but um, this time around I'm just going to do a very quick run through of a step-by-step -step sort of video to how to program and control the turntable with a DCC system instead of the factory box that comes with it. So um, if at any point you're confused, just pause the video, watch it back. I'll try and explain it as best I can, but as always if you have any questions please feel free to leave a comment in this comment section. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you've got. So with that said, let's get to it. Okay, so here you can see the Helgen turntable. Mine's been in place for a very long time. It's one of the first things I actually installed on the layer. Um, it's a really nice focal point, in my opinion, for the entire TMD section. You can see the Heritage Works is coming along quite nicely. I'm really starting to pull my finger out on doing the scenery now. So once I get that all sorted, I mean the TMD's all done, we've obviously got to paint this. Um, the turntable is going to be a nice addition and a nice focal point. So the turntable, you can still buy them and I would recommend if you really want one, get one because they're fantastic. General premise is very, very simple. This is a DC or a DCC system, um, either or. DCC is obviously where it's meant to be used. So if you do have a DCC system, you can control it separately instead of using the blue box that comes factory standard with it, like this one here. So. You can see here that I've got three tracks running into the turntable here. Um, a passing loop on the outside of the second shed. Flying Scots from there parked in track number one. Track number two. And then it reverses on and it can do a 180. And the train can be on its way. So, before we do that, let's have a look at the instructions and I'll see if I can explain to you how you can get this to work with this or any equivalent DCC system you may have. Okay, welcome back. So we're just here in front of the computer. Now I've got the manual for the DCC turntable up on screen. Um, what we're interested in is the section on how to program your turntable. So this is what we want to go for. So we're just going to find it and I've got to sort of explain how this mathematical equation works because it's going to be important later on when you go to program this in your DCC system. So you can see it discusses all the gubbins and how to use the blue box that comes with a standard, but this is what we're interested in. So if I just pull this up. Whoa. So factory, these things come with a DCC address of 57. You can see it there on screen. So the way it works is you've got this formula here. So you enter the factory address and it gives you 57 subtract 1 by 4 plus 1. So this number here is the one that's interesting because this plus one relates to the track position you have on track. So if you program the turntable to say track one is here, track two is here, track three is here, it will correlate to that particular address. So for instance, your base address for the turntable is gonna be 57 minus one by four. So if we do a quick calculation. Okay, so 57 minus one, 56. Whoop by 4. So your base address in a DC system is going to be 224. Um, what the 225 relates to is what position of track it goes to as I said. So with that in mind, I'm going to quickly review how you do that in the um, blue box and you can change the factory address from 57 right up to something else entirely if you want. In my case I had to do that because a lot of my accessories exceed the address 224 just by the naming convention that I used. So for the purposes of this video, let's just show you how to do that in the blue box. Okay, we're back at the blue box. I'm just going to get it back into focus. There we go. Okay, so this is what comes in the box with it. You get the, um, the cat cable. This runs to the base of the turntable. So this basically controls the turntable from the box. You've got your uh, DCC line in, which powers the box. And then you've got the DCC line into the track, which powers the track. So if you're using DCC, you run two lines in from your bus and you just loop it over like so, and that's, that's how it is. 
So what we're looking for in the blue box, you can see you've got your up, your down. What we want to do is we want to push go set. You'll see the numbers flash. And what we want to do is cycle through. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Just did escape. Calibrate. Program. Delete. Address. Address is the one that we want to go for. So we've got to go click address. Go set again. Now you can see the address that I'm using for this particular one is 63. Now you can change that all the way up to whichever. If it's clashing with anything you've got, that's fine. But the factory is 57. So we're just going to leave it at 63. Go set. And, um, you know, of course, reset, track one, track three. So the way that this is programmed is that um, uh, essentially if you program this You've got the option of using multiple uh, essentially track numbers. So this goes all the way up to 99 or whatever it is. I'm only using three track positions, so it's a little overkill for what it can do, but it's nice to know that it's there. So track three is actually my default track position, not track one. A um, bit of a bug in the programming, so I've just had to use track three for my purposes, which is fine. So in that instance, all we're going to do is go to track three, go set. If I push go set again, you'll see it flashes like that. If I look over here, you can see the turntable is going for a nice little walk. And it will return back to where it was originally, which is that track number one position. The really good thing about this is it's not too fast. It's really, really smooth. You do have to make sure that the grooves inside the bay or the pit for the I'm trying to find the right words here, the well for the turntable are correct. And you can see it's just formed up and aligned itself with track position one. Beautiful. Okay. So let's go back to the uh, ECOS and program this unit in. Okay, we're back at the computer. Um, personally I prefer with the ECOS using the VNC. Uh, it's a lot easier to do this than it is to do it with the tiny little thing here. So let's just run through what we've done. So you can see I've gone through to create an accessory. Now I've covered this in another video. All you need to do is go into the menu of the ECOS and create an accessory. Protocol is DCC of course. You can select if you've got other weird stuff. Um, Motorola, we're not using any of that so we're just going to leave it at DCC. Um, you can select the function or the icon that comes up on the display. So for my purposes, I've just chosen a function with track because that's exactly what it is. Uh, you can see you've got all your different options for turnouts and whatnot, but we're not interested in that. We're just going to leave it with a function as track. Go OK. And it comes up, it shows you the panel symbol there. So going back to what we were talking about before, the address is the important thing. Now we have a address of 63. So, if we go 63 minus 1, 62 by 4 is 2 for 8. So that's the default address of the DCC turntable. Now, my track position 1 is addressed to track 3. So all we need to do is 2 for 8 plus 3, which becomes 2 for 1. So, if we go to this box here, I'm just going to find the mouse. Uh, if we go to 251, that should now respond. Okay, now we're just going to make sure none of this other stuff is important, so we don't need to worry too much about the 250 millisecond response time because it's not essential. We're just going to click OK, and you can see that we've got this function now installed into the memory of the ECOS. So, in theory, if I click on this, the turntable should move. So let's click on it. just like that the turntable has started to move and we'll find out where it ends up to make sure it works really good kit this I do believe it's 200 or something pounds but believe me it's worth the money if you can do it right as I said you do need to make sure you maintain this thing regularly but um, with that said we'll program the rest of the tracks and it's done that beautifully. It's lined up with track one. We're good to go. So I'll program the rest of the tracks and we'll show you some running videos of trains going on and off the turntable. Stay tuned.
Okay, I've got Young Flying Scotsman here on the track. It's still one of my favourite locomotives by a long way, especially in these colours. But what we're going to do, we're going to reverse her out of the TMD, get her over to the turntable over yonder, 180 her, and then we're going to stable her back up where she was in the start of the video. So this should be fun. Let's go. Now I decided to put the sand on in this particular instance because it's really important that everyone sees the sand because the advantage of this particular turntable is that you can use DCC sand on its uh, there is a momentary cutout on these turntables though because obviously you want to avoid any short circuits so that's a really nice feature if you ask me even if it is a momentary cutout of sand Okay, it's probably a little bit fast to beat it down. And she's on. Okay, so I've got my little handheld here. Um, let it focus. So I've got this set up on a separate panel and we're using track number three. So when I push this little icon here, the turntable should start moving. So let's see how it goes. Oh, come on, focus. There we go. And off she goes. Now to prove my point about the DCC sound, you can still run it while it's on the turntable, which is really nice. And there you have it, Flying Scotsman is now down to 180 and she's ready to stable up in that little shed there. So let's move the camera back. Alright, so there it is. That's how you set up the DCC turntable by Hel Yan or Hel Jan, however you want to pronounce it. Um, very, very easy to do, especially if you've got something like an ECOS. But of course, if you've got another DCC system, it should be exactly the same principle. You've just got to set up the accessory to dress to the correct number, make sure that the number is correct in the blue box, and you're all good to go. Um, you know, you can really see the advantage of it, especially something like a sound locomotive. We had the lovely Flying Scotsman running on that before, which made me very very happy to see that it actually worked but nevertheless there we are so as always ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching if you do have any questions please be sure to leave some in the comments section below otherwise please be sure to like share subscribe your support is always welcome what's coming from me in the pipeline well i'm actually going to do a running session for the first time in the channel's history not that it's really of any interest to anybody but um i'll be busting my backside getting this layout to work 
and run as it should. And I think I'm finally at a point where I can confidently put some trains running on screen without anything disintegrating, short circuiting or derailing or <laughs> all sorts of things like that. So more to come from me in the new year. But if not, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Happy new year. We'll see you real soon. Happy model railroading.